Item number, SCP-007. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-007 is to be contained in a sealed room, measuring 10 meters on each side. Room is to be furnished comfortably as a living area, along with whatever items are requested by hereafter referred to as subject. Given that providing subject with requested items would not compromise security, subject is not to be allowed to leave the room, and is to be detained with force if necessary. Description SCP-007 is located within a cavity in the abdomen of subject. Subject is a Caucasian male, physically approximately 25 years of age. Subject claims to be 28, and 176 centimeters in height. Most of subject's abdomen, muscles, skin, and organs is absent, though subject does not appear to suffer because of this. Instead of normal flesh, a sphere composed of soil and water is present, though it does not actually come into contact with subject's body at any point. The sphere appears to be, in most respects, a miniature near duplicate of the Earth, approximately 60 centimeters in diameter. Although continental alignment is not consistent with that of any alignment known in Earth's history, the sphere has its own weather patterns and negligible gravitational pull, in addition to microscopic organisms somewhat resembling those of modern-day Earth inhabiting it. Two intelligent species have been observed, though contact and communication with either has yet to be made. Technology levels of observed species must be checked at least once a week and, as of are approximately equal to that of 15th century Earth. Subject claims to be named but no records of such a person can be found. Subject does not require food or water, and while he has been observed consuming both, what happens to such substances after being swallowed is unknown. Subject is intelligent, IQ has been measured at 128, and amiable, and regards the planet in his abdomen as a minor curiosity about his body. Subject seems to experience no stress about his unusual condition. When questioned about planet's origins, subject replied, I just woke up one day, and there it was. I don't have any idea how it got there. Subject has provided a social security number and driver's license number, and requested that they be checked against known records. When checked, it was discovered that neither had yet been allocated. Dr. has a weekly chess game with subject, during which subject's mental health is evaluated. Dr. reports that subject does not seem to mind the restricted living environment and has yet to attempt to escape or show signs of violence or mental illness, though he has repeatedly requested a computer with an internet connection. It is recommended that this not be provided, as it may be used to compromise security. Item number SCP-341 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures The Exhibition Hall of Reliquary Research and Containment Site-76 has SCP-341 on display for all research and command personnel to view. Description A collection of eleven brass and iron orreries found in a large storage room of a basement at Oxford comprise SCP-341. Each orrery is a rough-scale model of a different extrasolar star system complete with planets, moons, and one or more suns in the center. A unique clockwork mechanism under each orrery allows the brass models of planets and moons to spin on axis and rotate around each model of its parent stars. Testing dates each machine to be between 150 to 200 years old, but without any specific markings, researchers have been unable to determine who created them. The orrery collection of SCP-341 was set to be released into the hands of a local museum, until an SCP astronomer with a piqued interest in the discovery recognized one of the orreries, SCP-341-E, as star system Upsilon Andromedae A, unique for being a solar twin of our own sun, with hot Jupiter-like planets. Further research has matched five of the eleven orreries with possible known extrasolar systems, including Beta Canum Venaticorum, 37 Geminorum, HD 98618, 18 Scorpii, one orrery, known as the Wheel of Doom amongst researchers, depicts a similar solar system very reminiscent of our own souls. Though the planets and sun themselves are neither near to scale nor space proportionately, 
The presence of seven major planets of our own system is fairly obvious, including Saturn and its rings, and the tilted side of Uranus. There are also five minor planets included beyond the orbit of Neptune. The Orrery is missing a model of Earth, and instead has a free moon roaming through a debris field, similar to the asteroid belt present between Mars and Jupiter. Item Number SCP-345 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-345 is to be kept inside a secure vault, at sight, seeing as the object is inert by itself, no further containment is necessary. Personnel seeking to solve SCP-345 need the permission of one level two personnel. SCP-345-1 is to be kept inside a five meter by five meter by five meter sealed room on site. Following incident 3451, personnel are only allowed to solve one of the six faces of SCP-345. Trying to solve all faces will result in reassignment to MTF Epsilon 8, the Midwives. Description SCP-345 is a stone cube whose faces are each divided into nine squares of equal size, and sections of which can be rotated in a fashion similar to a common puzzle toy. Each face of the cube measures 5.7 centimeters. Instead of the normal six colors commonly found in this kind of puzzle, the squares represent six different materials. An intrusive magmatic rock resembling granite, an intrusive magmatic rock resembling gabbro, an extrusive magmatic rock resembling basalt, a sedimentary rock resembling sandstone, volcanic glass resembling obsidian, and a high-grade metamorphic rock resembling granite gneiss. SCP-345 can be opened by forcibly pulling its sides apart. The cube is hollow possessing a circular cavity 4.5 centimeters in diameter in its center. If left open for five seconds, SCP-345 will automatically close and shuffle itself for two minutes. Afterward, it may be safely handled. Note that it will not be possible to force SCP-345 open after the shuffling takes place. Solving SCP-345 is no harder than solving the common versions of the puzzle. However, if one of the faces becomes complete, one of the following situations may occur. If the completed face represents one of the magmatic rocks, SCP-345 will heat up to approximately either 1500 degrees Celsius, gabbro face, 1200 degrees Celsius, basalt face, or 900 degrees Celsius, granite face. The amount of time SCP-345 takes to cool down also greatly varies, with the basalt face being the fastest, up to 50 minutes, and the Gabbro face being the slowest, up to 250 days. If the completed face represents the sedimentary rock, the cube will start shaking violently for up to 10 hours. The sound of either water running or wind howling can be heard coming from inside SCP-345 during the whole process. If the completed face represents volcanic glass, SCP-345 will heat up to approximately 900 degrees Celsius and will take up to five minutes to cool down. If the completed face represents the metamorphic rock, SCP-345 will suffer the same process that would happen if the granite face was completed. After cooling down, the cube will proceed to shuffle itself at high speeds, making loud grinding sounds while it does so for up to 50 hours. After one of the processes is over, SCP-345 can be opened again, and a sculpture made of the same material that was represented by the completed face can be found inside of it. The small sculpture will always be of a planet or planetoid 4.5 centimeters in diameter. These sculptures do not resemble any currently known planet. If more than one face is completed at the same time, both corresponding processes will occur, one followed by the other. The statue created will be made of both materials, for instance, the sculpture created by completing the granite and obsidian faces at the same time had its continents made of granite and its oceans made of obsidian. SCP-345 was recovered by a Foundation agent on date undisclosed, days after the eruption of the volcano in Ecuador. Said agent claims to have found it near the base of the volcano, 
and took it as a curiosity. He learned about the true nature of the SCP after trying to solve it, suffering third-degree burns in the process. Incident 3451 On date undisclosed, while Dr. tested SCP-345, she managed to complete all faces by not opening the cube once a face was completed. SCP-345 proceeded to rumble for three minutes, after which it opened by itself. A small metal sphere, 4.5 centimeters in diameter, emerged from inside SCP-345 and hovered three meters from the ground. Shortly after, the sphere began rotating, accelerating to a rate of five meters a second. Strong gravitational forces were detected in the vicinity of the sphere, visibly affecting objects up to 15 meters away. Seconds later, a dense orange liquid with an average surface temperature of approximately 4,000 degrees Celsius began flowing from SCP-345, which proceeded to encompass the metal sphere. Afterward, another, denser liquid began flowing out of SCP-345. It also proceeded to encircle the sphere. This liquid continued to flow from inside SCP-345 until the sphere reached a diameter of 2.3 meters, at which point the flow stopped and SCP-345 automatically closed. The resulting sphere was still slowly spinning and hovering above the ground. It was extremely dense, and its gravitational pull was strong enough to severely damage its surroundings. The temperature at the surface varied between 900 and 1600 degrees Celsius. 30 minutes later, parts of the outermost magma began to cool down, solidifying into a thin rock crust. 20 hours later, most parts of the sphere were solid rock, with small seas of lava flowing between them. Little volcanoes and mountains could also be observed. At this point, a special containment team with heat-resistant equipment was moved in to relocate the sphere to a safer room. The sphere was later designated SCP-3451. Studies regarding the probability of its eventual development of an atmosphere are underway. Note. Although at first we thought that SCP-345 had created a copy of Earth, as of date undisclosed, studies have shown that it is unlikely that SCP-3451 will develop an atmosphere, and the composition of its magma is very different from Earth's, containing far smaller quantities of silica and aluminum, and larger amounts of titanium. It is currently unknown if the magma of other planetoids created by SCP-345 would have a similar composition. Perhaps we should have a D-Class complete it, preferably on an open field. Dr. Item Number SCP-364 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Since SCP-364 cannot be reached by humans, containment measures consist primarily of finding and suppressing any information about SCP-364 before such information can be publicly disseminated. Foundation assets have been inserted into all major space agencies and most private space exploration companies, with standing orders to report back on any actions planned or being carried out that could potentially expose SCP-364. A task force has also been set up to monitor actions by amateur astronomers. Although the chances of independent discovery of SCP-364 from ground-based installations are quite small, Description SCP-364 is a point several hundred meters above the volcano Cert on Io, the innermost of Jupiter's Galilean satellites. At irregular intervals, varying amounts of material, up to 4,000 cubic meters at a time, spontaneously appear at this location and settle into Cert, where the material is incinerated by the lava flow from the volcano. The mechanism by which this material appears is not known and no permanent physical structure has, as yet, been detected near SCP-364 at any other location on Io or anywhere else in the Jovian system. In addition, no unusual energy emissions have been detected coming from SCP-364 or the surrounding area. The material that appears is usually a heterogeneous mixture of substances, including metals, particularly ferrous and titanic alloys, organic compounds, siliceous compounds, and several unknown materials. Though spectrographic analysis suggests that these may include stable super-heavy elements, 
on at least four occasions. Probes have detected marks on the material that appear to be a written language in an unknown script. In addition, a strong correlation has been discovered between the thermal output of CERT and the appearance of material at SCP-364. Although any potential causative relationship between the two phenomena is purely speculative, evidence collected to date overwhelmingly suggests that the material that appears at SCP-364 is artificial in origin. History The existence of SCP-364 was first suggested in 1979, following the flyby of Jupiter by the Voyager 1 probe. Unusual activity on Io had been picked up by Data Expunged, part of a clandestine package of instruments added to both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 by Foundation assets. However, the existence of SCP-364 could not be confirmed until the Galileo probe reached Jupiter in December 1995, using data and images collected by Galileo during its initial pass of Io. None of these images or data were released, the official story being that no images were taken in the first place. While Galileo was left to continue its original mission around Jupiter, Foundation personnel worked with high-ranking NASA officials to develop and launch two more probes to Io, specifically to study and monitor SCP-364. However, to avoid suspicion, these missions to Io were announced and treated as exploratory missions to Mars. In late 1999, both the Mars Climate Orbiter and the Mars Polar Lander appeared to crash land on Mars due to human error, when in actuality, both spacecraft continued on their way to Io, reaching Jupiter in 2007. Galileo had already been sent to its destruction in Jupiter's atmosphere by this time, but the two Mars probes continued to send back data from Io and SCP-364. The replacements for these probes are already data expunged. Note, because Io is constantly subjected to heavy radiation and Jupiter's formidable magnetosphere, any spacecraft sent into orbit around Io would be very short-lived, and the two probes up there now are in orbit around Europa and Jupiter. Thus, constant observation of SCP-364 is not possible, but this is not a major issue while SCP-364 remains immobile. A more pressing concern is technology. How long will it be before anyone in the world can point a next-generation telescope at Io and be able to resolve 10-meter-long objects from the Earth's surface? Plus, who's to say that whatever is sending that stuff to Io couldn't send it somewhere else? Dr. Blanchard Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.